guys and welcome to my channel before we get into today's topic please subscribe um, and click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload a new episode so um, today I want to talk about uh, people who try to attach shame onto you uh, for calling out their bad behavior and I say try to attach shame because honey shame is not for you to carry or to own under any circumstances and I'm gonna I guess attack it from the context of the workplace first and this has happened to me on more than one occasion where you have one person um, that you might interact with in the organization it could be a peer it could be a, a line manager or whatever the case may be and generally there will be people who are used to getting away with saying anything and everything to people and nobody stands up uh, to them nobody um, defends themselves nobody dares to say uh -uh, that's not gonna happen because this person will likely have um, very strong connections within the organization very well connected um, and they oftentimes are very senior so what has helped me navigate that very tricky ground in the workplace is being crystal clear about the types of associations that I want for myself, um, but also the type of professional reputation that I want to have in terms of the quality of my work, in terms of people knowing that I will always operate ethically, regardless of any types of pressure that people try to push on me. Um, but also, I want to be able to go home every day and be at peace with how I have contributed and how I have conducted myself um, within the workplace. And so I had to learn how to begin asserting myself um, within the workplace um, and how to start making sure that people who are bullies know that I am not the one to try with any of that stuff. And so I've put together a couple of tips um, that I hope will help you uh, within the workplace um, if you are also faced with these types of challenges. But they're not limited to the workplace. Even if you, you know, have people in your personal life um, that you are bullied by in any way. Um, and that could be either a partner, it could be family, you know. Sometimes our relatives can really try it. We all know about those people who um, love to take advantage um, and this also applies to friends. So if you are in a situation where you are not sure how to assert yourself, I hope that these tips um, are going to help you get well on your way. So the first one is you have to decide that you want to take your power back um, because if you're still feeling a bit unsure about it, then you're not going to be able to execute any of these tips. So you have to decide. That this is what you want to do that you want to reclaim your power and then the second thing is you have to decide that you are going to reject abusive behaviors at all times and that can be a difficult thing because sometimes these abusive behaviors are not as overt as we you know um, would assume that they are you know sometimes things abuse can be very very sneaky and very low-key and that's the problem with nuances and especially within the context of the workplace because abuse is generally not directly in your face it's like mm, i mean the words don't seem harmful but i don't feel that doesn't sit right with me you know um and it's being able to start being sensitive to that kind of stuff and start paying attention to language and how it is used um within the context of the relationships that you're dealing with and people trying to manipulate you into doing something um that you do not want to do or that goes against your values or your belief system or just your work ethic and then the next thing is when you are in a situation where people do try to put shame on you or people who do try to call you out your name or disrespect you it's important to speak up then and there stop them dead in their tracks and let them know what your expectations are let them know how to speak to you and to not talk to you like you're crazy now obviously in the workplace you can't say don't talk to me like you're crazy but you've got to set the tone you've got to set the standards in terms of how people can interact with you and what you are not willing to tolerate 
um, if this person or these people are doing this to you in front of an audience honey you better check them in front of that audience too because people love doing that people get comfortable in the assumption that if they behave badly we're not going to respond and meet them where they are in front of people people will, the assumption is always that we'll be too embarrassed to cause a scene or to create drama and you know what they're not too embarrassed to behave badly so guess what we're gonna deal with that and there's nothing embarrassing about standing up for yourself and telling somebody to come correct real quick the other thing is that you have to make it absolutely clear what you are not willing to tolerate whether it's in verbal communication whether it's in non-verbal communication whether it's in writing set the tone for how you expect people to treat you and how you expect them to behave and the type of environment that you want to be a part of um, and how you are contributing towards ensuring that that environment is achieved but they are being a barrier by behaving in that particular way and then hold your ground it is hard to push back against people because I'm sure many of you have experienced this but people generally don't respond very well to boundaries people don't respond well to being told no um, and so you're bound to have a lot of resistance coming up against you um, I mean I've had people go on entire campaigns and across an organization trying to have me blacklisted basically um, running my name through the mud simply because I would not lie down and let them abuse me so I want you to go into it knowing that the likelihood is that you will face some resistance sometimes a lot of resistance um, what helps me is remaining true to myself and remaining focused on what is true and ignoring all of the other noise because it's just a distraction and it's something that's just trying to force you to go back into allowing people to do as they please to walk all over you and to just continue these abusive cycles if you if this is a situation that is happening at work after you've had this confrontation it's critical that you follow it up with an email detailing everything that happened so you'll say on this day at this time you said this to me i responded by saying abc the matter was resolved in this way or it was not resolved in this way the next steps are going to be a b c d this was agreed this was not agreed as detailed as possible because i cannot stress enough the importance of keeping a paper trail you cannot trust bullies you cannot trust people who are trying to compromise you nobody who nobody who tries to compromise you could ever be looking out for your best interests um, and then the last thing is always remember that you're playing for a different audience and this applies particularly within the context of the workplace you know you never know where issues in the workplace are going to lead to you never know how far they're going to be escalated um, and I know for myself I had one incident with my boss when she spoke to me like she was crazy and I called a meet and she did it publicly and I at the time was just too stunned to even respond <laughs> you know immediately I called her uh, into a meeting um, a few weeks later I had a conversation with her and I said to her listen I do not appreciate the way in which you spoke to me if there is something that you are not happy with if there is something that you want to have a conversation about you will ask me to have a meeting in a room and we will speak to each other like professionals um, I'm not going to tolerate abuse I'm not going to tolerate being shouted at or being you know um, humiliated I'm absolutely not going to do that so that was one incident and for me once i had that conversation i'd had the conversation i'd addressed the issue and i followed it up with an email um but that conversation led to 
oh my gosh a to like I, I can't even it was a professional tornado I think because after that she did any and everything to try and discredit me to try and get me uh, to lose my job through constructive dismissal um, she did everything to make every single day of my life at work miserable um, she made sure that I had no support I had no resources I had no safe place I had no allies I had nothing my only saving graces were number one my work ethic um, because I have always been about delivering quality work so she could never fault that no matter how much she tried and the other thing was I became the queen of paper trails and documenting everything and I really mean everything and those two things are the things that quite literally saved me from being fired because if that woman could have had her way I would have been out of my butt a long time before I decided to leave on my own so it's really really important that you start to think about what type of environment you want for yourself uh, what types of behaviors you want to be exposed to uh, what types of behaviors you want to exhibit and what types of behaviors you're absolutely unwilling to tolerate and then start thinking about using these tips to guide you, start thinking about how you can then begin to apply that, whether to your work situation or to your home environment or your social circles, wherever it is that you really need it. I think that, you know, as currently being on lockdown, this is an opportune time for you to start practicing these skills of pushing back, um, being more assertive, because now there's limited face-to-face -face time, because let's be honest, Having to have these conversations face to face with somebody can be very intimidating, um, especially if there are people who command some sort of power or influence within the organization. It can be very intimidating to try and have a conversation with them, especially if they talk over you all the time or they overpower you or, you know, just in terms of their presence um, because they people are very conscious of how they tower over people even if it's not physically so um also you have you know you, you you get to be protected from various responses like eye rolling or you know how people respond like that sometimes when you try and call them out so that they make you feel like you're being unreasonable or you being dramatic or you're overreacting so use this time when you are at home if you're working from home if you you know where you do have this distance where you're not dealing with people face to face to start building up your courage and building up your ability to be more assertive to put your foot down where necessary within reason obviously um and to be very clear about your role your mandate your willingness and your ability to perform as part of a team but your requirement for a healthy environment that is conducive to you being able to fulfill your duties so i hope that these tips were helpful for you and i hope that they will guide you um, as you develop your soft skills for the workplace i mean these are not soft skills at all they are very much hard skills um, and I, I hope that it makes work and life a little bit easier for you as time goes by and as you keep on practicing them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell to get notifications every time there's a new episode. And thank you so much for watching this episode. I'll see you next time.